Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you, Kyle. And welcome, everybody. Thank you for attending our event. And uh, today's uh, presentation, as Dan mentioned, and Kyle will be about the onboarding data assistant. So this is very much in the theme of making great expectations easy to use uh, in all sorts of scenarios. So just people who don't know me real quick, my name is Alex Shustinsky. I'm an engineer at Superconductive working on great expectations. Um, so the scenario that I will show here is that of creating your first expectation suite and how the upcoming releases will make it easy. So the prerequisites for that are that you have already pip installed great expectations and created um, one or more data sources. So let me share my screen now and show the next steps which are creating the suite and uh, navigating the notebook. Uh, for that, um, does everybody see my screen? The terminal? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So now in a pre-release way, the onboarding data assistant is specified as a parameter. Once released, it will just be able to invoke it without onboarding dash data dash assistant. Um, and what happens then is that we will be presented as usual with the options to select a data source. And I'm going to use the taxi, New York City taxi data source, which has uh, 36 months of the taxi data in there, one of our common test cases. And uh, there is a data asset in there. Um, one my reports I'm going to select that. And now the system offers me to name my expectation suite. Um, this default sounds fine. So let's go ahead and choose that. And now, um, let me make sure I have the right browser, I do. Let's proceed. As always, I am presented with uh, the Jupyter Notebook to complete the remaining steps. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's initialize our expectation suite with the name we provided. Let's give it a moment to go through the initialization phases. And once done, we will verify that the number of batches is what we expected it to be. So thirty six, correct. Now, as with the user configurable profiler, we can select the columns of interest. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select several co columns. Here, we do it by excluding columns. So the columns that are not commented are the ones that are included. And then comes the onboarding data assistant. It fundamentally takes the batch request, which will point to our 36 batches of data. Uh, in addition, it has a number of very, very fine grained controls. And by release time, they will be richly documented. We do not need them for now, other than to specify which columns we're excluding. And at the end, we're adding the generated suite to the validator. So the fundamental job of the data assistant is to predict, recommend the expectations that will be needed for your data set as indicated by the batch request. And also estimate their parameters. So it does both. 
generate the predicted set of expectations deemed optimal for your data set and estimate their parameters so that for the user, the experience is as easy as possible. Essentially, we're maximizing the value generated by the product per click. Few click, lots of values. Few clicks, lots of values. Big, uh, lots of value for smaller number of keystrokes. And so the system is performing this action. And once it's completed, we will perform the validations. So it's going through all of the batches, performing estimations. Now it's done. Let's uh, validate it and see what the results will be. So the onboarding data assistant determined that this data set needs 31 expectations. And it shows, lists these expectations for the columns we specified, plus the table level expectation. And displays parameters so that we can examine it. And of course, there is a link to the expectation suite itself, as always. Uh, the key takeaway here is that the onboarding data system took the columns that we specified and generated a set of expectations for each column, plus the table level expectations. But in terms of the columns, of which there are many, it predicted the expectations that were needed and generated parameters. You may be interested in a more of an a la carte setting where for a given column, let's say tip amount, you may be interested in uh, running, experimenting with one expectation, not a whole set. And this is where the auto initializing expectations come in extremely handy. So let's go ahead and add one such expectation. Let's say that I'm interested in the value range for the tip amount column. And, uh, we will invoke the expectation, expect column values to be between and not specify any settings other than the fact that we wish for the arguments to be estimated automatically. So now we're not using the onboarding data assistant to predict expectations. We're choosing one ourselves. However, we are using the rest of the mechanism to estimate the parameters automatically. And so that estimation upon execution says that the tip amount has the minimum value of negative $1.2 and the maximum $216.8. And so when one looks at these numbers, one may suspect that it is intuitively not uh, feasible or something could be wrong, especially the negative amount. So what one can do after that then is apply another expectation in the auto initializing way to look at the quantiles. The quantiles, the very good estimate because it gives us a quick glance at the distribution of data. And then we can decide whether or not all values reported make sense or if there could be outliers and further examination is needed. So let us go ahead and run the expect column quantile values to be between. So the system will estimate what that between should be those arguments and report to us. And now let's run the validation again. So previously we had 31 expectations. Now we have 33 because we added two expectation to expectations. Let's go check what happened with the tip amount. So the value range that was reported is between negative dollar and 20 cents and 216.8 dollars. But the quantiles tell a different picture. Quantiles say that 25 
percent of values are below zero. So we can tell that there's an outlier in the negative range. These are quartiles. The median says that generally tips are not very high, $1.86 uh, between 80 cents and $2. And that the 75% quantile, the third quartile is shown as having most of the tips um, less than between $2.30 and $3 and estimated 2.75 in the current batch. And so that says that the minima and the maxima were outliers that could be issues with the source of the data generation, more investigation is needed. So this is how quickly you can start with creating the expectation suite that can immediately tell you what is going on with your data, the next steps, and uh, give you tight controls for how to explore your data set and generate the expectations whose validation will make sense and will be useful for you. Thank you very much. I'm happy to take questions. If not, um, please feel free to contact me, us at any time via Slack, and I will uh, pass the microphone back to Kyle. Thank you very much. Alex, I think there's one in the chat if you want to check it out. I'm looking right now. Thank you. From Joe. And I'll start to queue up the next video. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, Alex. Um, that was awesome. Uh, really excited to see that out and about the. Uh, I think Carl, like yeah. Uh, to Joe's question, um, like what was uh, just demoed was being able to declare an expectation without constraints, and then having it detect what the range would be, and and potentially then generate an expectation that meets those constraints. Um, so I was wondering if, if, if that functionality, being able to then inspect the payload and see see what the values were that picked up, um, could be useful for what Joe was looking for. Well, um, I'm still reading through the questions, but it's important to also mention that these values that are generated automatically um, is one mode. And if the user is satisfied with one or both values in case it's a range or whatever values are, they can set those values into the expectation arguments as before, and the user values will override anything that could be automatically generated. So it's a collaborative uh, workflow as you're developing your expectations to use the automatic mode, look at the values, uh, adjust them as you deem appropriate and set them back before you save your expectation suite. But I'm, I'm still reading the questions and I will respond in the chat once I have a specific and concrete answer. I think that answers the question. Sorry, I think it was a question because really what you would want to do is you would want, if you were using anomaly detection, you would want to get the upper and lower bound of the anomaly bounding box and then use that and then populate your expectation with, with those values rather than um, after the validation has taken place. So I think what I was thinking was uh, why don't we not populate any any thresholds for the expectation, run the validation, and then um, and then determine whether like an alert should be um, dispatched and so on. But really, you should pop. I think you would probably populate the expectation with the anomaly detection bounding boxes prior to running validation. Yes, and this validation was just as an example in what happens during the authoring, but you're absolutely correct. When you're running in production, you want to have set determined values. This process um, in expectation suite creation is part of the authoring phase. You know, we have two phases, the authoring phase, and you keep iterating until you're satisfied uh, doing the authoring on the sample of your data, significant sample, but not your entire production data. And once you're satisfied, with your knowledge of production data and how well 
the sample batches represent your production, you will at some point come to an agreement with what the expectations and the arguments ought to be with the help of automatic estimation, as well as with the data assistant that creates your suggested list. Then in production, you will run, have uh, alerts for serious validations as you need, then you can go back and adjust. It's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a feedback system because in production over time, maybe these expectations will cease to be uh, adequate and you will learn from the differences and discrepancies and go back to update in a, you know, as, in, as a process.